Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Shias killed in military-controlled areas of Pakistan. South Korean protesters, family and friends reject autopsy call. Thai human rights lawyers continues to face judicial harassment. Thai police summon more activists for attending constitution event. Pacific countries call for West Papuan self-determination. Trauma counseling workshop held in Nepal. Urgent appeals from India and Indonesia. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I am Julia Rablando. This week, Just Asia begins with the killing of six Pakistani Shias, including four women, in two cities under military control. In Kedah city, the capital of Balochistan, four women were shot in a bus on their way home on October 4th. The women belong to the Hazara Shia sect, which remains the main target of the sectarian hate. Two motorbike riders on one bike sneaked into the heavily controlled area by the Frontier Corps and stopped a bus carrying eight women. The men checked the identity cards of all the women on the bus and shot them. Four died immediately, one is seriously injured, and three escaped. The shooting occurred less than 100 yards from the FC military checkpoint. On the same evening, another incident of Shia killing occurred in the military-controlled area of Wa Cantonment, which has a huge arms and ammunition factory. Two motorbike riders shot at Shias returning from their mosque. Two persons were shot dead while one was seriously injured. During the past 10 years, more than 500 Hazara Shia have been killed in different incidents of target killings, suicide bomb attacks, and attacks on their houses and Imam Barga. General public discussion questions how Pakistan can fight a war when its military cannot protect its own citizen under its control. Any crisis in the country sees religious minority groups being targeted particularly in areas under direct military control. The Asian Human Rights Commission condemns the killings of Shia men and women during their mourning month of Muharram. In South Korea, a court warrant was issued on September 28th for an autopsy on Baek Nam Ki, whose death was reported last week. A farmer who had been in a coma after being hit by police water cannon in 2015, Beck passed away on September 25, 2016. While many Korean citizens are calling for an investigation into the excessive use of force during a peaceful protest that caused Beck's death, public indignation has been increasing due to the dubious endeavor to manipulate Beck's cause of death. While clear that Beck's death was caused by external trauma, the Seoul National University Hospital doctor pronounced his death as a death from illness. Meanwhile, Beck's family and concerned citizens are opposing calls for an autopsy to determine the cause of death. According to them, it is clear that Beck's death was caused by being hit with a police water cannon. They are now officially calling for the Seoul National University Hospital to change Beck's death from illness to death from external trauma. Around 30,000 farmers, workers, and members of the public gathered in Seoul's Daehakro area holding signs, We are Beck Namki, during a memorial for the late Beck on October 1st. And around 1,000 people were guarding the funeral home to prevent police and prosecutors from seizing Beck's body for autopsy. Nationwide support for Beck is also seen in the large number of items being donated to the funeral home for the late Beck and his family. Moving to Thailand, human rights lawyer Ms. Sirikan Charan Siri has been summoned to report to the Bangkok police for sedition and other offenses on 27 September 2016. Issued on September 20th, the summons indicated that Ms. Sirikan was allegedly being held as an accomplice to the offense of making an appearance to public by words, 
writings or any other means which is not an act within the purpose of the Constitution, as well as having participated in a political gathering of five persons or more. As Ms. Sirikan was attending the 33rd regular session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, Switzerland, from 17th to 25th September 2016, upon her return, she submitted a letter to postpone the reporting. The summons failed to provide any implicit details of her actions, which allegedly violated the law. Given that the summons were issued by the same police station that handled the case of the 14 student activists case represented by Ms. Sirikan, as well as the same military officer, it is likely that Ms. Sirikan is being charged for providing legal support to the students at their peaceful demonstration on 25 June 2015. This will become clearer once the police inform her of the charges against her on their new reporting date. The International Commission of Juries ICJ congratulates Thailand on the completion of its second cycle universal parole review. However, the ICJ disappointed that several key recommendations concerning restrictions of civil and political rights in the country did not enjoy the support of Thailand. The interim constitution put in place by the military government after the May 2014 coup remains in force. Article 44 gives the government sweeping unchecked powers inconsistent with the fundamental pillars of the rule of law and human rights. The military government has issued issue numerous orders and announcements under the interim constitution, including some that criminalize political gatherings, allow arbitrary detention for up to seven days without charge, and provide military officers broad powers of law enforcement. At least 1,811 civilians have faced proceedings in military courts. Contrary to international law and standards, many merely for exercising the right to free expression and peaceful assembly, Thailand did not accept any of the recommendations to remove these restrictions on the rule of law and human rights, while the ICJ law comes the order of 12 September 2016 ending the practice of prosecuting civilians in military courts for crimes committed after that date. Approximately 500 civilian cases remain in military courts. The ICJ is also concerned that in July the government charged three human rights defenders with criminal defamation for raising allegations of torture in the Deep South. The ICJ urges Thailand to accept and implement recommendations relevant to revoking the interim constitution and all NCPO orders and announcements that are contrary to the rule of law and respect for human rights transferring all pending civilian cases to civilian courts and set aside the convictions of all civilians prosecuted in military courts since the 2014 coup and ending all harassment of human rights defenders in Thailand. I thank you. In other Thailand news, the Khan Khan police issued summons for five more people on September 26 for attending a public discussion on the draft constitution at Khan Khan University in the country's northeast. The five summoned people include a former member of parliament from Phalwa Thai Party, a lecturer at Khan Khan University, one anonymous activist, and two new democracy movement members, Mr. Rangsiman Rome and Mr. Panapong Nice Sithanana Wat. Mr. Rangsiman Rome is also facing military court proceedings in Bangkok for distributing documents deemed to prevent voters from casting a ballot. Although the summons do not provide details of accusations, the case has stemmed from the 31st July 2016 event titled The Talk for Freedom, the Constitution and Isan People Forum at the Faculty of Agriculture, Khan Khan University, organized by the student activists to discuss the draft constitution and its implications on Thai people living in northeastern Thailand. For more information, Just Asia interviews Mr. Panupong Sithananuwat, a member of the Daudin group. ในในด้านหน้าที่ในส่วนของงานก็ไม่ไม่ได้ทําอะไรวันนี้มารับทราบข้อกล่าวหาครับเขาเขาเขาแจ้งเขาแจ้งความไปว่าเป็นเอ่
แล้วก็ส่วนส่วนของถ้าส่วนของทางภาคการก็จะมีการเคลื่อนไหวเรื่องการเมืองอะไรเนี่ยครับการเลือกตั้งหรือว่ารัฐธรรมนูญที่ผ่านมาก็มีการเคลื่อนไหวกันอยู่ครับมูฟิงจากอินโดนีเซีย6 Pacific countries called for West Papua's right to self-determination to be respected, raising human rights violations occurring in the province during the general debate of the UN General Assembly's 71st session. The Indonesian delegation strongly rejected and denied the allegation of abuse raised by the six Pacific countries of the Solomon Islands, Vanatua, Nauru, the Marshall Islands, Tuvalu, and Tonga. Ms. Nara Masista Rahmatia, an official at Indonesia's permanent mission to the United Nations, stated that their politically motivated statements were designed to support separatist groups in the said provinces who have consistently engaged in inciting public disorder and in conducting armed terrorist attacks. She further noted that it is highly regrettable and dangerous for states to misuse the United Nations for such purposes. Nara's statement, however, has ignored various human rights violations occurring in Papua. For instance, the Mwasir and Womena case, the Thais Hiyo Elue murder case, the enforced disappearance of Mr. Aristoteles Masaka, the Paniai case of 2014, and the Tolikar case. None of these cases have been addressed by the government, and none of the victims or family members have received adequate remedy. Mr. President, Solomon Islands is gravely concerned about the human rights violation against Melanesians in West Papua. Human rights violations in West Papua and the pursuit for self-determination of West Papua are two sides of the same coin. Many reports on human rights violations in West Papua emphasize the inherent corroboration between the right of self to self-determination self determination that results in direct violation of human rights by Indonesia and its attempts to smother any form of opposition. The principle of sovereignty, Mr. President, is paramount in any institution whose core rationale is the respect for sovereignty. Now, if the jurisdiction of sovereignty rests on a series of decisions that are questionable, then there is a case to challenge the legality. Last year, on this same podium, I stood here and spoke about human rights abuses taking place in Indonesia ruled West Papua. In the year that has passed, nothing appears to have changed in that place. I use the word appears intentionally, intentionally because now we still have no way of knowing exactly what is going on in there. Probably something is definitely wrong. Nearly half a century ago, when I was a young man anymore, I had learned, as many others in the region had done, that a wrong was done to the West Papuans. I'm not a young man. I have struck volcanoes, great odds, much of my life for justice and democracy in my land. The state leaders chose instead to violate the UN Charter by interfering in other countries' sovereignty and violating its territorial integrity. We categorically reject the continuing insinuations in their statements. Next, in Nepal, a trauma counseling workshop for human rights defenders was held in Kathmandu from October 1st to 3rd. The 17 participants included human rights defenders, advocates, journalists, and civil society members. The sessions were led by senior psychologist Dr. Rajat Mitra. Amongst the topics discussed were trauma in human rights, suicidal nature, interviewing victims with trauma, differentiation and confrontation of Madhasi and the Pahadas. The workshop also focused on giving handy tools to the participants.
The documentary Healing Manipur was screened, which was very well liked by the participants. The formation of similar social groups was discussed in detail. Lastly, the participants suggested the AHRC conduct similar workshops outside Kathmandu on a regional level. Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features two cases from India and Indonesia. In India, the home of a poor resident, Gulab Singh, was demolished in Madhya Pradesh to make way for the proposed National Highway 7. The home was demolished without any prior notice or compensation to the family, forcing them to sleep out in the open during the rains. In Indonesia, Army personnel attacked journalist Mr. Sony Misdananto in Madiun, East Java, for recording them beating up civilians during a traffic accident. His video memory card was also destroyed. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash just Asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week. <laughs>